The Amazon rainforest in South America, a colorful heaven for diverse wildlife. Astonish tourists when they find a section with only one type of tree. They might think it's a local plantation, but even locals are surprised and call these spots Devil's Gardens. Is this story as mystical as it seems? We'll figure it out today. The Amazon rainforest is one of the most biodiverse places on Earth, home to 427 mammals, 1300 birds, 378 reptiles and at least 40,000 plant species. The reason is simple – sun and humidity. Think about life in the Arctic. Harsh climate, scarce food and limited shelter makes it hard for wildlife to thrive. In contrast, the tropics have a warm climate, plenty of food and diverse ecosystems. Over time, these favorable conditions have allowed species to adapt and specialize, leading to the vast species richness in places like the Amazon Basin. Now, imagine finding a spot in this lush rainforest where only one tree species grows. You might think someone planted them on purpose, right? But when you realize no one did, you could start to wonder if the devil himself is standing in this garden. That's exactly what the Quechua people thought. They named these places Devil's Gardens. They believe these areas are inhabited by Chalachek. This mythical creature is often described as a forest-dwelling spirit with one normal human foot and one deformed or animal-like foot. The Chalachak is believed to deceive travelers by taking on the appearance of someone familiar, leading them astray in the dense jungle. They are said to live in remote forest spots, far from human habitation, where they supposedly tend their gardens and fields. The mystery of Devil's Garden has only recently been solved. These gardens are not created or maintained by humans or forest spirits, but by ants. The lemon ants have a special preference for the tree Duroya herisuta. This tree provides hollow stems and leaves, known as Dometia, which are perfect for ant nesting. Dometia are small structures produced by plants to offer living space for insects or fungi but they have no special functions beyond hosting these organisms. Why would a plant do this? Not out of kindness. In nature, mutual benefits drive such relationships. The ants kill any plant species other than their preferred to royal her sweet by using formic acid as an herbicide. If you've ever been stung by a bee, or touched nettles, you felt formic acid. The ants inject this acid into the leaves of other plants, causing necrosis within 24 hours. This eliminates competitors for the tree, creating more living space for the ants. In return, the tree provides shelter for the ants, and the ants protect the tree from competing vegetation. This win-win relationship is called mutualism. This example highlights one of the many ways living organisms interact with each other. In nature, these interactions can be helpful or harmful. The main types of interaction include competition. Both species are negatively affected. For example, squirrels and blackbirds compete for acorns when production is low. Mutualism. Both species benefit. 
Examples include plants and mycorrhiza, herbivores and cellulose digesting microbes, and flowers with their pollinators. Exploitation – one species benefits at the expense of another. This includes predation – the predator kills and eats the prey. Herbivory – animals consume plant parts or algae. Parasitism and pathogenicity – parasites or pathogens harm their host. One of the most frightening examples of parasitism for me is a dog-eating louse. This parasitic isopod enters fish through the gills. Using its front claws, the louse severs the blood vessels in the fish tongue, causing it to necrose due to lack of blood. The louse then attaches to the stub, becoming the fish's new tongue. And this is about it. You might also like this video about atropine and the shocking truth of why witches fly on broomsticks. See you soon. Bye bye.